in prayer. Amen. Heavenly Father, Lord, we stand here tonight, God, just in awe of all that you've done. And Lord, that you certainly have brought to us something that we could not find on our own. Lord, you have given us through your Son great promises to all who have trusted in your Son, our Savior. And God, we thank you, Lord, as you look at believers, that you see Jesus' sacrifice on the cross that takes away our sin. So, Lord, today, as you look upon us, look upon us as we stand in the shadow of the Almighty Cross, the Almighty Cross that you, the Almighty God, have placed upon that hill that now overshadows us. Thank you for the blood of your son, Jesus. And the church all said, amen, amen. amen. <laughs> so tonight we're still in 2 Peter. And um, it goes along with the theme even from Sunday as we preached uh, from, from 1 Peter with uh, offering you some help for holy living. Um, I wonder how often throughout any day of your life that you think about the price that was paid. I wonder how often we think about eternity in view of all the things that you come up against on your day-to-day -day living. And some would say, well, you know, you really have to have a mind for eternity, and you do. But you also need to realize that you're here to live. Jesus said he came to give us life and that more abundantly. And <clears throat> living a holy life, uh, it's, it's, not, it's not just the goal to reach and then, oh, look, I've made it. I'm now holy. I'm ready to go. No, it's not. It's, it's a process whereby you are being ready to go. Uh, you could call that, you know, that uh, uh, sanctification. It's a process whereby you're being sanctified uh, day by day, moment by moment, where, in fact, you are, you are listen, you, you are um, uh, changed from glory to glory. And when you think about that, so the glory you had yesterday, the grace you had yesterday, is not the grace that you'll need for today. It might be the same kind of grace, it might, and the grace that's, that will come from the same place, but it's the grace that you need for today today and that when this grace is over for today how many of you have hope for tomorrow that that same grace that you had today only it's for another day uh, is this making sense and so um tonight we're going to be in first peter and uh i'm going to let johnny read for us tonight you know johnny cash anybody know johnny cash uh <laughs> Man of but we're going to focus tonight when we get there uh on verses 5 through 11 um, and tonight we're, we just want to talk about a, a recipe for life. And I mean not just to be alive, but a recipe for life. Second Peter chapter 1. Oh, yeah. second? Yeah. Well, last, last Sunday I preached in First Peter. Oh, okay. Tonight, though, we're going to share from Second Peter. Hit it, Johnny. <laughs> the second epistle of Peter, chapter 1. <laughs> Simon Peter, a bond servant and apostle of Jesus Christ, to those who have obtained like precious faith with us by the righteousness of our God and Savior Jesus Christ, grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord, as his divine power has given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us by glory and virtue, by which have been given to us exceedingly great and precious promises that through these you may be partakers of the divine nature having escaped the corruption <laughs> that is in the world through lust but also for this very reason giving all diligence add to your faith virtue to virtue knowledge <laughs> to knowledge self-control to self-control perseverance to perseverance godliness to godliness brotherly kindness and to brotherly kindness love for if these things are yours and abound you will be neither barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our lord jesus christ for he who lacks these things is short-sighted even to blindness and has forgotten that he was cleansed from his old sins therefore brethren be even more diligent to make your call and election sure for if you do these things you will never stumble for so, an entrance will be supplied to you abundantly into the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. For this reason, 
I will not be negligent to remind you always of these things, though you know and are established in the present truth. Yes, I think it is right, as long as I am in this tent, to stir you up by reminding you, knowing that shortly I must put off my tent, just as our Lord Jesus Christ showed me. Moreover, I will be careful to ensure that you always have a reminder of these things after my decease. For we did not follow cunningly devised fables when we made known to you the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, but were eyewitnesses of his majesty. For he received from God the Father honor and glory when such a voice came to him from the excellent glory. This is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. And we heard this voice, which came from heaven when we were with him on the holy mountain. And so we have the prophetic word confirmed, which you do well to heed as a light that shines in a dark place until the day dawns and the morning star rises in your hearts, knowing this first, that no prophecy of scripture is of any private interpretation. For prophecy never came by the will of man, but holy men of God spoke as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. <laughs> how many cooks we got in here? How, how many of you? How many of you tried to cook and failed? Oh, oh you even the, your hand. even the cooks, even the cooks have failed from time to time. Yeah, yeah. And uh, maybe it's because um, you know you you didn't follow the recipe. Uh, you missed something. I, I, <laughs> wait, since Ashley's not here, I'll, I'll use Ashley because God bless her. I love that girl. Of course, I love both of them. But uh, she she so wanted to make dinner one night. How old was she? About six. Six or seven. Six or seven years old, and so she uh, she she gets into the cupboard and she's in there. She's opening up. She's opening up some cans, and uh, she gets down the box of instant potatoes, and she gets it all done up, and it looks really good. And uh, anyway, uh, after we, had, we sat down at the table to eat, and I took that first bite of the potatoes, and, and uh, I, I can't remember what she got mixed up, but I can just tell you, it said to put so many teaspoons of this and so many, you know, a cup of that, and she got the two mixed up. And anyway, there wasn't a couple of teaspoons of salt. Um, you know, it, it's interesting. How many of you know you can always put more salt in, but you can't take, can't it, take out. it out? <laughs> At least in food. But she, but she tried. You know, and God bless her. I hate it. Um, she knows about it. Um, she was so upset, and I told her I'm, I'm going to eat it anyway. Uh, but she was still upset because <laughs> she couldn't eat it. <laughs> Wouldn't even eat her own food. But that, yeah, you, you just had had to see, been there and seen that little blonde-headed girl, and yeah. Anyhow. So here's the, so, so the one I want to ask you tonight. So, do you have a favorite recipe? Um, and of course, you may you may have add another question. Oh well, recipe for what? Breakfast, lunch, dinner, dessert. And most of us, we have something that's maybe a favorite recipe, something that we make on a regular basis. You know, I mean, that, if if someone were to ask me about my mom's recipes, there are some things that I really like. And uh, yeah, cornbread. Uh huh. Um, yeah, it, it takes a lot to compete with that cornbread. Some of you do a pretty good job, but. <laughs> But, uh, but and, and, th and things like that, you know, there's some things that some people just, whatever it is, they have a, they have a knack for putting it just together just right. Um, it, you know, maybe, maybe one of your favorite recipes, and maybe it is a family recipe, you know, and, uh, and, and get this, it's a family recipe and, and the ingredients are, a, a, you know, it's like one of the, it's a, it's a, a well-kept secret. You know, maybe it's a barbecue sauce or maybe it's, a, maybe it's actually, you know, all, you know uh, some main course or something and it's just, Something that your your mama's 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 mama's, you know, all the way back to the caveman time. <laughs> they, blueberry pancake. There you go. I mean, so it, but but the first time that you prepared a dish, um, when, when we when we do this and we've never done it before, the first time you know we, we prepare that dish, uh, we at least and I still do this. And those those who come to eat breakfast on Saturday, if I'm if I'm making a dish and there's a recipe, you might want to just thank Jesus that I, I I read the recipe. And I mean, I watch, I look at the the ingredients like a hidden treasure, you know, a map. It's gonna because otherwise it's gonna be not good, you know, skull and crossbones rather than something that's tasty. Um, but you know, so you do this and you want to make sure you've got just the right amount of each item that's in there. 
you know, like Ashley's attack with taters, you know, too much salt. Um, yeah. <laughs> and you knew the combination of the ingredients would result in something delicious. Why? Because you've had it before. Maybe you made it, maybe someone else made it, but so when we look at the scripture, look at verse five. Let's, re let's begin there. <laughs> because I think in some ways our lives are like a recipe. Beginning in verse 5, it says, But also for this very reason, giving all diligence, here it is, add to your, uh, your faith virtue, to virtue knowledge, to knowledge self-control, to self-control perseverance, to perseverance godliness, to godliness brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness love. For if these things are yours and, you, and, and abound, you will neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. For he who lacks these things is short-sighted even to blindness and has forgotten that he was cleansed from his old sins. Therefore, brethren, be even more diligent to make your call and election sure. For if you do these things, you will never stumble, for so an, uh, an entrance will be supplied to you uh, abundantly into the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So there, there are some things, and I've preached on this, I've taught on this, and I'm teaching on it again tonight. Uh, so many people, it's, it's faith alone, and that's all they've got. Yeah. They don't add the rest of these ingredients to their life, and they wonder why their life seems uh, to be a little bit more uh, uh, troublesome, or, or it's, not, it's not as fruitful. But, and you look at the, there's there's quite a few ingredients here, and as you go down through here, the first thing is add to your faith virtue. You can't be a person, well, you, a man or woman of true faith and live like the devil. <laughs> you, you know, what is virtue? Sister, what's virtue? Well, um, that is, uh, I, I lost my question now. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> okay, you answer mine then. What, what would you say, what is virtue? That is um, your goodness. Goodness. Well, I don't think that's exact, but um, that would be the good lifestyle that you live. Mm -hmm. That's your virtue. Yeah, and, and your virtue actually is the thing that is going to govern all the rest of your life. You know, your whether you know what kind of a person you're going to be, uh, what, how you're going to respond, and of course the, the the rest of this goes along with this. So you add to your virtue knowledge. You can't go out there. Yes. That was why I was going to say. You know, we talked about the recipe. But you know that in the recipe, you can't, there's things that you need to add at the end. Yeah. Uh, this is a recipe that builds. It, yes. Builds up. It so builds. This, this way of living, it starts with a... Uh, starts with, with faith. And then it ends with something. Um, you know, I, I make an Irish stew. You don't put the last ingredients in first. You put the first ingredients Amen. in. Amen. You wait for two or three hours later. Put all those other it, things so what in. you're saying is it doesn't all come in at the same it time. All come in same time. Anybody else have recipes like that? I mean, right. you know, you know, as, as the thing is going. I mean, maybe part of the recipe it might be when it goes in the oven, when you change the temperature, I mean, a lot of things. Yeah. And so when you think of it like that, when, and that's the that's the idea. That is the dynamics of this. Now, you, if you run out of here t and, and you say, okay, I've just listened to this. I've got to run out of here right now. I've got to get. I've got to add me some virtue, and then I've got to add me some knowledge. And I get no. Listen, let's put the virtue in first. And along with the virtue, as, that, as, that's, as that's, I'll just say this, as it's marinating. Your faith is, let, what, listen to how I put this. Your faith is marinating in that virtue. And why is it, uh, with, with certain foods we marinate them, what does it do? It tenderizes and makes it taste better. Tenderizes, makes it taste better. Um, and then, of course, once that, as that's marinating, okay, while you're doing this, okay, the next thing, after it's marinated for a while, there's going to come a desire, but wait, I want to know more, so we want to add knowledge. Yes? Uh, virtue, a definition in uh, conformity to a standard of right. Yeah. Conformity to a standard of right, or righteous living. A beneficial quality or power of a thing. Amen. So that is your virtue. So do I like that. But it's the power of a thing. Mm -hmm. Wait, if your faith has no power, but it's about probably because you haven't added virtue to it. Yeah, think about this. There was something that Jesus did, or actually it happened to Jesus. He was pushing his way through a crowd one day. Well, there was this woman who pushed her way to get to him, and she touched him. 
Or she actually, she didn't touch him. She touched his robe. And the Bible says that he felt what? Power. 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 He felt virtue flow from him. And what did he say? Who touched me? And, of course, the disciples, you know, everybody around him. What do you mean? Who touched? Everybody's pressing around. You're, you're being bumped into from left and right. But only this one seemed to somehow or other draw virtue from him. Yes. Because of her faith. Because, there, because of her faith. Did you, are you getting this? And maybe this is going to bring some of the other stories like this in the Bible to the surface. And you're going to say, oh, I, I, you know, I didn't. See. Wait, the virtue fl flowed from him, from his robes. And it flowed to her. And he felt the virtue leave. Really? He felt something draw. It, there was this power that was drawn from him. And what drew power from Jesus? Her faith. Her faith did. And so we go on and we add knowledge because... And even in that story, if you, if you go back and read the story, you'll find out that there were some things that had to be taught immediately, right, following this. Of course, there's a message in that anyway. So you add knowledge, and then to your knowledge, self-control. Now, self-control, um, just, just to be clear, self-control is not just a, a matter of your own will. Here's, here's what happens. This is, what, what, this is one of the things that I learned early on. Uh, you can try to control your temper. You can try, try to control how you respond to things in your life. Uh, or you can learn to do something else so you can get help to control that thing. It's called the Holy Spirit. Anybody know him? No. Because did you know that self-control is one of the fruits of the Spirit? Mm -hmm. Did you know that? And, when, and so we go on and we see all this. Uh, and we can go out through each and every one of these. You know, to, to self-control, you add perseverance. And and some of us, you you, you got to be honest with yourselves and that's the thing, men. You got to be honest with yourselves, you because if you have a tendency to fly off the handle, you know. <laughs> I heard this just the other day. He said, "Well, you know, enough was enough." I said, "Well, you need to persevere a little longer." And he said, "I couldn't." <laughs> but did you, I, here's what I asked this person because this was a brother in Christ. I said, "Let me ask you: Did you ask God to help you with this situation?" And you know, you know what he said? Well, no. He said, "Now you got nobody to blame but yourself." So, um, just to, so you know, uh, later on, actually it was just this morning, uh, I happened to go see the guy this morning. He says, you know, he says, uh, I, I did go and I prayed and I had, but you know what God told me to do? I said, why? He says, I had to go and apologize to my wife. <laughs> and he said, you know, that was tough. You yeah, know, so, that, so <laughs> he said, I'm going to persevere a little bit better <laughs> next time. So you, from perseverance, you add what? Godliness. And, of course, we can look up the definitions, and this is something I'm encouraging everybody to do. Go in here, read the book. Some of us would have to admit, you read the book, you don't know what the word meant. And then you walk away, and then you wonder why it is that you can't... Well, you, wait, what if I told you, ignorance is no excuse. If you choose to remain ignorant, then you've chosen to be unfruitful. Does this make sense? I, I don't want to know. I'm, in uh, civil law, ignorance of the law is no excuse. And even in not civil protect law. you against prosecution if you break the law. And so then, then, okay, so you get to the godliness part, and then you got to add brotherly kindness to it. Be kindly, the Bible says, be kindly affectionate one to another, right? Mm -hmm. And so, and just adding kindness by itself doesn't get it if you don't do it in love. What did Paul say to the church of Corinth? Though, listen, though, though I have all these gifts, though I can do this, and though I can do that, but I have not love. You can be kind, you can be a nice person, but have, but not have uh, love for someone. And when, you got to go back. That means you you skip the part. That means you skip that godliness part. So, you know, in some ways, our lives are like a recipe. Okay, the difference is that <coughs> there are no secret ingredients. That there aren't any secret ingredients. Um, I, there are some things I wish I could say, but I can't say because these are people that you don't know, and I don't want to share their business. But I can tell you, there, are, and, and it's one of the things that keeps me. Uh, um, I, I'd like to say in the trenches, and that's why I'll just use that tonight. Some of you might know what that means. There's what, something that just keeps me doing what I do, and the way I, I'll get a phone call from someone, and you hear how their life is changing, and it's not, it, and I've said this to the guys before. How often does somebody come to you for godly counsel? scriptural counsel if you say never you might want to figure out what kind of a what kind of an image are you portraying are you not a godly person and if all you say well i just go to church wait oh what did somebody just say the other day um oh yeah so you know you you can go in and out of the church 
But going in and out of the church doesn't make you any more of a Christian than going in and out of a barn makes you a cow. <laughs> you know, I mean, it's true. I, <laughs> so, so just because, and I'll, I'll just, I'll bring it up here because there are so many people, you want to get upset about today's society where they want to identify with someone or something that they weren't born to be? Don't criticize them until you come to a, and you really can't criticize them anyway. Uh, yeah. But I'll just, I just want to lay this out. You can't, you can't claim to be a Christian when you're not. Just claiming it doesn't make you a Christian. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, that name it and claim it stuff, there, just, to, just to be clear, there is a precedent for naming and claiming in the Bible. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But you need to understand something. Like just because you claim it doesn't make it so. Just because you said it doesn't make it happen. Yeah, you know, I mean, so <coughs> it begins with faith. And that faith, our life, begin, our true life, our, our true life in this world that leads to the life in the ne and the life that is to come is it begins with Jesus Christ. Anybody know him? Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, I mean, Peter was a follower of Jesus. Peter was one of the leaders of the church in those days. And, 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 it, and it gave us, he gave us some ingredients that, that for an even better, more fulfilling life in Christ. You have faith to believe in Christ and here's what he's saying. Add these things to your faith in Christ. I mean, it, here's his recipe for a productive life. Some of us, you're going to sit back right now, and because most of us are over 50 in here. <laughs> right? Right now, tonight, in our, who, we, tonight. So yeah. you look back over your life, and you think about these people that are in their 20s. Uh, and first off, you need to understand, they've got a, they, they, you've got your whole life ahead of you, too. You don't know how long you're going to be here or not. And you could sit here and you can say, boy, I wish I'd started when I was in my 20s. Well, quit, <laughs> quit bemoaning the fact that you were, you know, just lost in your 20s, knowing that you were not lost any longer. And now that you know what ingredients are missing, you can fix it. take some responsibility for your own life. Because your responsibility could be the gateway to be a witness to some of these younger people. And if you think you're going to go to heaven without witnessing to these younger people, I, you know, I don't know. I, I've got a rule for myself. Let me tell you what my conviction is. I don't want to stand before the Lord and, and, and be in a position where he says, what did you do with my gospel? Mm -hmm. and, and I've preached like this before, and I've said this before, and, 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 I, and I know I've seen the faces of some people like, well, you know, I'm not a preacher or a Sunday school. No, wait. Your gospel, it's like this. Evangelize. Witness to somebody. Sometimes use words. But did you know your actions? You know, what do they say? Actions do what? Speak louder, than words. Speak louder than your words. But I'm telling you, witness and sometimes use words. Uh -huh. Okay? I mean, think about this. Is this making sense to you tonight? Yes. So <laughs> he gives us this recipe for a, an effective and a productive life. Have you got friends and family that you'd love to see, that, that they would come to a knowledge, at least a, a saving knowledge, or that have, and, and have, yeah. before you leave this world, that they, at least you know they had faith to believe in Jesus, and that perhaps maybe you set them a pattern, that, an example that they should follow in, in uh, enriching their life to live a, the full life that Jesus has promised. I mean, God gave great and glorious promises to those who trust in his Son. And the promise isn't just for you alone. And see, that's a problem with so many people today. It's always about me. Uh, I, you know, I understand what the songwriters, if it had only been just one, he would have died even just for me. And there's some truth to that. But can I tell you what's a greater truth for me is the fact he didn't just die for me. Everybody. He died for everybody. So here's the, here's your go. Here, here's what, what the recipe is. You might want to write this down. If you don't want to write it down, I'll give it to you later. Um, first off, begin with a personal relationship with Jesus. Now, there are a lot of people that claim to have a personal relationship with Jesus, and I would question that in view of maybe what I know about them and how they live their lives. And maybe maybe you say, well, there's nobody perfect. No, I understand. And you know what the Bible says? There's no, not, no, no one good, no, not one. But I understand, but does that, if I say that, does that mean that I think I'm that person that's perfect? No, I'm not even perfect. I am still a wreck. Somebody say amen. amen. That you're still a wreck too. Anybody? And, and many of us, we've been saved for more than a minute. We've been, we've been, we've been working this, this formula. We've been working this recipe. And we're still working on it because I'm not done yet. Amen? I mean, I, I know there's some things that's going to have to happen. You know, I, most likely... Uh, 
I might have to go back in the oven for a little bit more baking. You know, because there's something to be said for that purifying fire. Amen? So, begin with your personal relationship with Jesus, and then add some goodness. And to that goodness, um, add an equal amount of knowledge. And what kind of knowledge are we talking about? Hey, listen, the scripture, the, good, the goodness that is God that's in us. And so you, you, you have this goodness and this knowledge, and, and then stir in a little bit of self-control. Just stir some of that in there. And, and how about this? How about you put a little pinch of mutual affection? In other words, you love that you have, that you really have love one for another. And do good to all people, but especially to the household of faith. Some of us here in our own fellowship, you're still lacking in that. A pinch of what? A pinch of mutual affection. Thank you. And then here's what you want to do. You've got all this together. You've got your personal relationship. You've got your goodness with a with that equal amount of knowledge. You got that you got that self control and and you stirred it together with some perseverance. And you've combined it, you've combined it with that godliness and a pinch of mutual affection. I couldn't keep up. And then you mix it thoroughly. I couldn't either. You mix it thoroughly and you bake it with an abundance of love. You'll just have to print it off for us. Okay. Please. But you, but well, it's right there in print. Okay. Yeah. It's in the Bible. Okay. You see, it's in the Bible. I'll still give you the list because I'm trying to give it to you in terms you can understand. There's a reason Jesus told, he told uh, his, his parables and he quite often used farmers and seed planting. Oh, and fishing and this and that because that's the people he was talking to. So if I'm talking to some people that cook and I start telling you, here's the ingredients for a recipe and you got to stir it this bit, you put a little pinch of that and you combine it with this and an equal amount of that and then you mix it thoroughly together and then you put it in the oven, you, you put it in the, 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 you know, and bake it with the abundance of love. Wow. And that's exactly what we're seeing he's telling us to do here. God doesn't expect us to become us instantly perfect. He doesn't expect all this to happen, as it was said earlier. It's a progression. You know, you enter into faith. And after the faith, you, you look, okay, I've got to add virtue to my faith. But then as you, as you start trying to be a good person, you need to have knowledge, because you really need to maybe have knowledge, personal knowledge of Christ, personal knowledge of his works, personal knowledge of, of yourself, and, and have a, an accurate assessment of yourself. So he, he tells us, that we can possess these qualities. And if you continue to do it, it will increase. I mean, it's, it's like this. You know, you put something in bread to make it rise. I mean, pancakes don't rise too good, right? But bread does a really good job. And you think about when it, okay, and it, watch this. When you're making bread, you, you mix the dough with the right amount of flour and this and some other ingredients. And you mix it in with a, a certain amount of yeast. And then you sit it aside for a while. You don't stick it right in the oven, do you? No. You gotta let it rise. You got yeah. It's just it's let it rise. So, growing in these areas is is caused by our relationship that we have with Jesus, and that is the best. Listen, I'm just giving you the best recipe for a productive life. You can you can go to your self helps. You can you can uh, you know go to those the, those ten points of. Of, of better living you can go and you know get the book your best life now just to be clear you can live a good life now but you're never gonna live your best life until the next life no. amen no. but the idea is this, tells us the scripture tells us to make the best of every day mm -hmm. and how do we do it we make sure that we're continually adding these these components this recipe for our life together in proper measure amen mm -hmm. And so if we if we, we we reflect this, and we'll talk about it here for a few minutes uh, in just a moment, but which characteristic in the list is an area which God wants to help you grow right now? Notice, you may, you may be going through that list, and you say, you know, I've done pretty good here, and I think I'm doing okay there, but you get to one, maybe you're having a little trouble with, I don't know, self-control, or maybe you're pretty good with self-control, mm -hmm. and, and, um, and, and you're having a little trouble with, you know, sticking with it because it's so hard to, you know, to have that self-control. I mean, do you understand what I'm saying? So there, there's going to be something in this list. If you let's look at the scripture, it's right there. Right here in verse 5, 6, and 7. There's the recipe. It's easy. 
It, it's like A, B, C, one, two, three. But what happens is that we've made it hard. You know, the scripture talks about the gospel and it describes the gospel as being simple. Oh, it's a mystery, but it's a mystery to, to, that is to be discovered, that mystery where, you, di where you, di you discover it more and more every day. Am I, am I teaching good tonight or what? Yes, sir. Are you learning good? Yeah. So what is one way that you have grown in your relationship with Jesus since you started following him? Now, we're going to talk about that here in just a moment but because uh, it's just going to be amongst, amongst friends because the whole wide world and social media doesn't need to know your business. Nope. Just to be clear, I'll, I'll make that statement. Don't be posting your stuff on Facebook unless it's good stuff to encourage me. I don't, <laughs> you know, uh, anyway, I, I could talk on that for a while, but we're not going to. So how many of you tonight really want to ha want to have that your uh, the life that God wants you to have right now? Amen. Yep. Yeah. Okay, now here's the thing. He doesn't expect you to be perfect. He doesn't expect that you're going to have all of these qualities all at one time. But what he does expect is that we pursue this process. And not only do we pursue it, but we help others do the same. If you're not discipling anybody, you're not a disciple. Did you hear that? Now, you, you, may, not have, you may not have the calling. What's he say? To make our calling and election sure. For if you do these things, you will never stumble. For so an entrance will be supplied to you abundantly into everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. You know, you first disciple yourself, I guess you could say discipline yourself, but then you become an example that others could and should follow. Let's go to the Lord of Prayer. Are you ready for that? Yeah. Father, we have reviewed in the text over the last few weeks. We, we know about your great and glorious promises that you've made, precious promises. But Lord, I understand that promises are only as good as the person who makes them. But Lord, it's you that are making the promises. How much better could it be? Because your promise is an unbreakable covenant. Your promise comes with total commitment from you to make good on the promise as long as we prove ourselves faithful and worthy to receive the rewards. Lord, your promise of salvation, the promise that we receive when we first have faith to believe Jesus, and that promise of transformation and glorification. All this can come true for all believers, but only if we add these things to our faith. So many have faith to believe in Jesus, but they're not doing anything to add to their lives or to add to their faith. Lord, I ask tonight, God, that you would stir our hearts and that, God, that you would pique our desire to be real in Jesus, even as he is real in us. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.